During the course, you'll probably have a few problems with your code. It won't work as you expect it to, you'll get bugs, and you'll probably be pretty frustrated. So I'd like to take a couple of minutes right now to show you how best to deal with those situations when they arise and how to get answers super quickly. So step one is debug your code. Usual thing is to check for error messages. So I would have a look in the compiler, in the browser, wherever it is that you're working to see exactly what's causing the problem. You can normally get the line number as well. And then you can just use that to hopefully work out where the error message is, add in the bracket or the semicolon or whatever it is that's missing and move on with the course. Failing that, my usual advice is to remove all the code that you just added until it works again and then add it in gradually one line by line then you should find that at some point it will stop working. If it doesn't, then your problem's solved. But if it does, at least then you know exactly where the problem is and you can start to find solutions to it. Finally, if that doesn't help, compare your code against my demo code. All the lectures have code built in to them so that you can download and then you can see what is different in your code and hopefully see if that is causing the problem. All right, so what if you've done all this debugging and you still can't get it working? Well, step two, and this is what makes you a real programmer, is learning how to find solutions online. So it's pretty straightforward, really. It is just Googling. My general approach is to Google the specific error message that you've got. And if you don't have an error message, then get one, either from the compiler, from the browser, from Xcode, whatever it is, and then Google that along with the name of the programming language. Almost certainly, at least one person, if not several people, have had that exact same problem, and there's probably a solution right there on Stack Overflow for you. So that's issue number one. If that doesn't help, then you can always Google, how do I do, and then whatever it is that you're trying to do. Again, put the name of the programming language in there as well. And that will probably get you a few lines of code which will achieve exactly what you want. You can either paste those in and move on, or you can see what was different about those to the code that you were using, and then hopefully work out where you were going wrong, and then once again, move on with the course. All right, occasionally, of course, you will have to ask some questions, and that's absolutely fine. I love that we've got 200,000 people in the forums for these courses, and people are extremely helpful, and I want to get answers to your questions as quickly as possible. So the main thing here is to ask good questions. I've answered thousands of support questions now over these courses, and I know what makes a good question. So first off, be positive. I know you're feeling frustrated and often it, that can leak out into when you're asking a question. But if you keep things positive, you're much more likely to get an answer. So ask very nicely for help. So you'd be very grateful for anyone that can help you out and you're much more likely to get a quick and helpful response. Secondly, be specific. So don't just paste in a massive load of code and say, this doesn't work, what's wrong? But once you've done all the error checking and the debugging, you should know exactly where your problem is. So send a screenshot of that code or send the few lines of code that are not working along with the error message so that we know exactly where you're going wrong. And then once again, you should get a nice, quick and accurate response to your question. If you can do, give a link to your code in action. So this is particularly useful for the web course, but maybe for other courses as well. Either give a link on your web hosting or to jsbin.com or another site where your code is actually running. Then we can make changes and test it out and we should be able to get back to you even quicker with a solution. Finally, once you've got your solution, thank someone if they've helped you. I've looked back over the forums and the vast majority of helpful comments are not thanked at all, which doesn't encourage people to help people again. So please do just go back and say thanks, that was really helpful so that they know that they've helped you. And last but not least, while you're there, why not see if you can answer someone else's question? If you've had help from me or from other people doing the course, then it's great to give back a little to the course and then help a few other people as well. So while you've asked your question, just answer a couple of other people's and then that will keep the love flowing and keep everyone happy and progressing in their coding careers. So enjoy the course and I'll see you in the forums.